So this is why we don't. Like, you write gorgeous things, but let's not. Let's call them or schedule a meeting with them. When you think about your team, do they have a defined follow-up strategy? People want to know that they're more than just a number. They want to be a person. That's probably why they're shopping to begin with. Diving in, our next beautiful sales topic during the month launch of our How to Sell Insurance course. Now, that might seem very baseline. Some of you out there are thinking, how to sell insurance? I know how to sell insurance, but I'm going to question, do we have a quoting process, underwriting process, or true sales process? And I think as we go through this, we sometimes find that we have only a quoting process. So let's open up this podcast by talking a little bit about like what would be some symptoms of having only a quoting process, not a sales process? We get really good at quotes, but not at selling it. That's a good one. My personal favorite is we email the quote as opposed to presenting the quote and identifying with the person and teaching them about what we recommend versus, well, I called them and I left them a a message. But people just want to read it. They want to have it in their hand. They want to smell it and touch it and highlight it. They want to think about it and sleep next to it and then write down a long list of questions and then call me after they've had time to think about it. Yes. They've only looked at the price, people. <laughs> what? They have nothing to do with the bottom. Yeah, they, they don't even know. They don't even know how many terms, months. They don't know it's included. They don't even know if you even insured the right vehicle. They have no. They just look at the price. I had somebody I worked with would write the most beautiful email, like ten paragraph email. Each one was custom type with all the details and benefits and everything. And then she put the price towards the bottom in bold. And I was like, you know what people are doing, right? They're not even opening the attachment. They're looking for that big, bold price. And they're not reading any of this. And she goes, yeah, they are. And I'm like, the next person that call, I want you to call. And I want you to ask somebody what they thought of the email you wrote them. So she called and they're like, oh, well, it's more than I'm paying now. She goes, but did you see all the other benefits and all the things and all the, and they're like, well, it's more than I'm paying now. And I'm like, so this is why we don't. Like you write gorgeous things, but let's not. Let's call them or schedule a meeting with them. I think another way you see that all the sales process is people are just presenting one option, like take it or leave it. Here you mm-hmm. go. Have a nice day. Yeah. And they're not really diving deeper, maybe into like, hey, here's option A, option B. You could have a $2 million umbrella. What does it hurt? What's the worst somebody's going to say? When we're not following a sales process and we're just quoting, we're not closing. We, yeah. And we need to be closing from the beginning, right? We need to know. Do I have the right person? Is this my buyer? Is this my is this my ideal client? Is this a client that my agency even wants to write? Or as a salesperson, am I just putting a tally markup on my board? So true. So true on that one. Another way that you have a sales process or a, a quote process, not a sales process, is that you know when you think about your team, do they have a defined follow up strategy? Right, like. We deliver the quote, the person's not ready to make a decision, how many follow-ups do we make? And if it's like, well, I email them once because I don't want to be pushy. That is not a sales process, people. (laughs) Steven, you look like you had something to say. Oh, I was going to say, I don't want to be demanding. They're going to call me if they want it. Oh, that's right. Yes, I love that one too. They're going to call me. I'm I'm being the um, ambivalent agent today. The ambivalent agent today. Or we just quote what they ask, right? Like we don't say, hey, I'm going to package some things together for you. We don't set appointments. These are all things that should be a part of your sales process. So let's dive into how do we present the quote? Because I think this is also key and critical, right? So this is like, to me, like this is your, we should be practicing this. Like we should be role playing it out. Not like every single one, but like there should be a defined beginning, middle and end to engage the person. And a lot of times this is one of the things I see, and this is another key that you have a quote process and a sales process. If we pick up the phone and say, Bobby, great news, I got your quote. It's blah, 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 in price. And I'm like, why would we, the second I give the price to Bobby, Bobby has control of that call. (laughs) And Bobby might be in a six month policy or like, she's not thinking, you know, like, so we blurred out this number and in her mind, she's like, the matrix is happening. (laughs) Like, do, 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 like they stop listening. You could be telling them all the value and this and that and how amazing your quote is. And she's just like, I wonder when so-and-so is going to get back to me to see if this is competitive. (laughs) You know, like she's off the rails. (laughs) Let's talk a little bit about what goes in the beginning of, you know, we pick up the phone if we're not quoting over the phone and we're 
talking to them and say, hey, I think the first step is we got to build back some rapport. Not make it like a, I'm only here to sell you things. <laughs> I just went too far. I just, I would like to take your money. So I think you got to be like, hey, you know, how's work? Where are you today? Are you enjoying the weather? What, whatever it is. Like, how are the kids? I know in tech class, you guys want to go for pizza. How is the pizza? <laughs> and then I like to start by just alerting people like, hey, so based on everything you shared, I have a great quote here for me today. Like, even if the quote's worth more money, we always start off with you have a great quote. Because in that buyer's mind, like, oh, awesome. I like you. You have a great quote. This is perfect. Like, I'm stacking the deck in my favor and just putting people's minds at ease because I'm not going to give them the price for several minutes from now. <laughs> right. So we got to build a little rapport. We got to assume the sale to have a great quote. I know it's going to be a great fit for your business or your family or whatever it is and go from there. That's my step one. What do you guys think of that? I yeah, it. I do too. I think, you know, people want to know that they're more than just a number. They want to be a person. That's probably why they're shopping to begin with, right? Somebody didn't get a hold of them or they didn't have that rapport with their prior agent. So we need to make them feel special. They will remember how we made them feel. That's absolutely true. When I was like, I always go to like Nextdoor, which is like a neighborhood page. It's kind of an app thing for your area. And I look at all the insurance posts of all the people like flipping out over Ray or what's <laughs> happening in the market or how unfair their agent is. But then I look through and the other day there was one where two of, two of our clients were mentioned. I was like, this is an amazing agency. Like give them a call. They're always so friendly. They're always so helpful. And I mean, there was a couple of other agencies that were listed there as well, but I was like, shut up. Like it brought it back home for me. Cause I was like, I know these two agents and they're amazing. So I screenshotted it and sent it over to them. I'm like, you guys are popular next door today. But it's because there was like, and then other people comment like, oh, I have them too. I have them too. I have them too. They're great. So I think that as we're taking time to build that report and really getting to know our clients and provide options and solutions, people really appreciate that. It's more than just a number. It's more yeah. than just what have you. And it's what helps you build your brand in a better relationship. Oh, grease. I agree, agrees, agrees, agrees. So after we build rapport, the next step I think is to explain the carrier. I've selected this carrier and let me tell you a little bit about them. Because when you're working with an independent agent, like people may not have heard of all the carriers that you provide, right? So what happens if I don't know about it? I go online, I Google, guess what every carrier's online reviews look like? Not great. Yeah, nobody's like, hey, Five star. They took my EFT out on time. <laughs> like <laughs> the most expecting. helpful reviews are like the bad claim scenarios where they didn't cover something, or you know, all the one stars, two stars are all like you know up at the top. I remember looking at one. I we did some work with a carrier, and I remember looking at it, and it was like everybody was upset because they didn't get a rental car when they had a car accident, <laughs> and I was like, that's something you you put on your. <laughs> See, like, but people don't know that, right? So that's that's something we do. So I always like to say that. Tell them a little bit about it. Many many of the independent carriers we work with, like people have never heard of them before. So just stop. If your your hey, our largest client is with them, or hey, my mom is with them. Tell people that they love that. People are psyched about that. So I think you got to build some value in the carrier so that everybody's feeling a little good about that. Yeah. That's my step two is carrier and then three features. So part of our, our sales training that we do is always like, you have to get each carrier and actually get three features and say, what are three features of doing business with them? You know, they have great claim service. We'll make sure that you have a similar accommodations if you ever can't be in your house. So if you're on a lake house, you're getting a lake house, <laughs> you know, whatever it could be, just, you got to think about those three. Then I walk through and say, okay, I have two options for us to discuss. Option A and option B. And the reason that we want to do options. I love options. Well, the reason, <laughs> is, yeah, the reason we want to do options too is it's a sales strategy. If I can say yes to A or B, or I can say, well, I like this for me, I like B, and then they're putting the policy together with you. And what that ends up doing is get some bought in to it. So you're showing up front, we have options. You're showing up front that we work with people. And now we're collaborating. And when people feel invested like that, it's not yes or no. Like, will you go to the prom with me? It's mm -hmm. which one of these makes the most sense. And you'd be surprised how many people take the more expensive one once they see everything included for a little bit more investment. 
Yeah. So we always start with the options A, B, and whenever you, then at the end of that, we talk about the investment, not the price, not the premium to protect everything you work hard for. This would be an investment of X per month, always per month, never any other way. Don't give them all the zeros in the comma club, right? Mm -hmm. If there's a comma, we don't want to talk about it (laughs) unless monthly they do have a comma in their payment, then that's different. But I always do monthly because that makes people understand it, right? Even if it's a for pay, even if it's an annual, it's going to be this per month. Well, I think one of the best things I learned too is getting their buy-in. Like, hey, do you like this or that? Yeah. A or B? Like, what it, what does it work through? And at the end, even if the price is what I feel to be ridiculous, that doesn't mean that they, they will as well. Right. I take a step back and I don't shop out of my own pocket and I just present. So I'm like, yes. hey, here's what it is. We've solved all your problems. How do you want to move forward? Mm-hmm. But if we've taken the time to build a relationship, show value, and give them buy-in and options, a lot of times they're more likely to move forward because we've solved some of their problems. Or they'll take a step back and be like, hey, like maybe that's not so realistic, but can I still have a A with this and this? And that's exactly how we want to think about some things. So I think you have to do that. And then you have to do the hardest part. Ready? No, you didn't hit a dead spot. You shut your pie hole. (laughs) Because you got to give people time to think. And then you have to kind of go through and be like, okay, hey, how do we do this? What's up? What's new? What do I make? You know, where does this all come from? When you give people time, they'll either say, well, I was thinking more about it being in the range of this. And you walk and talk through things where if you don't do that, then it becomes a whole nother scenario. Yeah. If we don't get the objection, we can't deal with the objection. A hundred percent. Very good. So when we look at, you know, how to present the quote, we kind of break it down in those steps. But let's talk a little bit about like my belief that we shall role play that. (laughs) So how much do people like role-playing? Well, well, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> I think I think that a lot of people are uncomfortable till they do it a few times and they're like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought. Like the initial kickoff for it can be the biggest struggle. Yeah. I had an agency that, that used some role-play during a an interview the other day, which it is like, you know, I think it's great, right? You put people on the spot, you ask them to role play. If it's something that we do regularly in our agency, like how did that person handle that? And they did it. And um, I think it was a good testament to like, let's push people out of their comfort zone a little bit. You know, we, we role play quite a bit, but it's not, it's not like, oh, I just wake up in the morning and jump out of bed and go, oh, yay, yay, I get to role play today. Mm. But what I will say is that it gives me the ability to think quicker on my feet when I am in a situation and I can pivot and I can make those changes. And so even though at the time my mom used to tell me this when I was going to CrossFit regularly, do you like going? I can't believe you like to go to CrossFit. I said, mom, I don't necessarily love to go to CrossFit for an hour, but what I do like is how it makes me feel afterwards. And so I think we got to think about role play in the same way. Like we're getting the reps in, we're figuring it out. We're doing the hard work now so that it makes our work easier. Yeah, And and I would say that it works. So Mm -hmm. who cares? Like CrossFit works, (laughs) you know? So if if I have a goal and I want to be here, the path I get there usually includes some form of role playing or listening to podcasts or reading sales books, like things that in this industry we sometimes reject so heavily because like, well, I don't have time for that. I know everything. It's like, hold on. The best sales professionals I know legitimately don't feel like they know everything. They're constantly trying to get better and they're constantly trying to find one way because one simple talk track could change everything, right? It could boost your sales closing ratio 10%. It is not an exact science. It's a consistent necessity to keep at it. And we encourage you guys all to do it. So that's our message. Gotta go ahead and practice how to present the quotes, even if you think you know everything. And also watch out. I'll leave you guys with this. Are we using language that humans don't understand? 
only insurance agents do. So the goal is that you don't create a sale, you create a customer. And what that means is that that customer is with you for the next decade plus. So the better educated they are when they make that, the better educated they are to stay with the agency. And so we have to make sure that we're explaining everything in detail to people in a way that makes sense to them. So go get our sales course, 495, only until April 30th. Hop over, check out the show notes, and it'll be there soon. We'll see you guys in the next podcast.